Hey everyone, welcome back to Punchline. This is episode 2, The Lace of Compassion. I don't know what episode 1 was called, but I'm sensing a, you know, it's be a theme as far as undergarments goes. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, this is what the show's about. But yes, you just heard Skyline with me. Hello everyone. Yep, and uh, we're going to do our top 5 moments like always. And uh, to jump around with mine is uh, a little bit of time travel in terms of we get to see Robra's backstory. I guess where she came from, and her future, I guess her past career, she was a, trying to be, I guess, an exorcist or something. Yeah, but she wasn't very good at it, so I guess that's her past. Is, I think, I want to say half the episode is about her just being kind of down on herself, that she hasn't done any exorcisms in a while, and she's, you know, kind of feeling like, maybe this isn't my job I should be doing, I should be doing something else. So I guess half the episode is her kind of needing need to be cheered up by the rest of the cast. Yeah, I kind of felt like with her, is it wasn't she didn't advertise herself as a fake exorcist or anything like that but it seemed that she was kind of trying to say in a way that she's a con man right yeah you know that 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 she's a sham and you know maybe that line of work isn't working out for her so well in like her psyche or her soul or something like that so she's pretty down on herself for it right yeah so yeah that's probably half the episode but uh what's your number five that would be the scene between uh Ito and Meika. Ito's, Ito was like suspiciously sus- specific in her denials, and that was a bit of a comedy routine. Like, is that what it sounds like when you scratch? Oh my goodness, what the hell was that? Oh, that was a scab. That's what a scab sounds like? <laughs> just just that sort of thing. It's like, you know, Meika is a, uh, she's a very playful sort of landlord. I love that little bit where she like had some sort of switch on her glasses that turned them into those like dark old lady shades into her regular uh, regular glasses or something like that so i like to show how it's getting that kind of give and take back and forth style comedy oh yeah definitely that's pretty fun um number four would be there's a little brief explanation on a space time valley i guess i'm not sure what it's about but apparently boobs is the answer when you have to get down to that and the, <laughs> the cat just <sighs> e- explaining everything through perverted ways it makes me laugh and just how, you know, the main character is kind of yelling at him, like, you just use that for a chance, chance to say, say boobs, right? The cat's just, like, trying to play off, like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, I guess he's trying to explain all these different time theories, you know, I was really didn't grasp what he was trying to say, because it was kind of, you know, kind of random, <laughs> thrown in there. Well, I mean, think about the only other recent explanation we've had for time travel or fifth dimensional space, and that was Interstellar. Yeah. And that was really, really crazy. I'd much rather have it explained to me in the form of boobs than that. <laughs> yeah, from a talking cat with, you know, booze being out of jello. Kind of, kind of, kind of weird. And and I was like, that, you know, it's it makes sense. Like, they, I, I was surprised they didn't censor that. Like, yeah, you know, but I guess since it's an object, it doesn't really count. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of. <laughs> and if you have a choice between like Interstellar and Punchline of like man, manipulating the past by like manipulating the hands on a, on a clock, or manipulating someone's opi, which would you choose? True. I mean. I mean, even Gintel was completely at time, time travel with the whole freezing of time, reversing time. It <laughs> really never works out, so, mm. so yeah. But, yeah, I was still surprised it didn't censor the uh, boob jello. I was like, okay. <laughs> the boob pudding, whatever you want to call it. But, yeah, it was very, very strange. But they always do that with, like, uh, meat pies, too. They always, or whatever, meat buns, they show it. It looks <laughs> like boobs, but they're not. But, so, but yeah. So, your was your number four? Uh, the stupid cat confirms that it's another ghost possessing Yu's body. And, I, you know, like the last episode we were going through, the conjecture I was working on was that um, it's not exactly where as if we're dealing with ghosts, but I guess there might be some mix-up in the translation of versus ghost versus spirit or something like that. I have a tendency to think of someone's ghost as after they died. Mm-hmm. But in this case, it appears to be like their ectoplasmic form or something like that. Right, it makes me think of uh, Rincon a little bit. The other yeah. ghost show. That we really don't really see all the ghosts, but we just see like, you know, what they look like. And, but yeah, I'm mean, still curious as who or what spirit is in that body. You know, what are they taking this body over for? Is that going to be the overall plot for the first arc? Or are they going to just, you know, try to find out who that is? And so far, it's totally getting there. But yeah. It seems like whoever it is, he's keeping busy. Right, yeah. Going through his letters and stuff too. <laughs> exactly. So maybe he knows the guy. What the hell? Know? You never know, maybe, maybe old ancestor that knows him. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, so, I up number three would be uh, Yuri Kuma. There are bears in this episode. A bear, I should say. And uh, that explains that you said in number, number four that, or number one, five, that, you know, she was screaming, Ito was screaming, and making these strange noises. And, you know, I guess 
one of the girls walks in with some pie and tries to talk to her and just, I guess, discovers there's a lot of weird things going on. You know, like the, the, wood, the wood in the wall has been tore up, the hairbrush is all messy. So, yeah, Ito tries to play it off. Says, oh, this is just me. I'm going through some changes. I have these, uh, you know, scales on my back. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> This, this, the, this story which she was making it was just so funny. How they how they framed the scene it was really strange. They had another you know uh, Panchira shot without you uh, in sight of it, and it was really played off really weird, like the the bear food pellets dropping out of her shirt. It, that was just so odd. Yeah, that's true. And you know Mika Ten, she's I kid, she's trying to figure out what's going on. Eventually, she discovers that the fact Ito has a bear in her bedroom, like a little cub. So it's like. Where did you get that bear? And I guess she bought it online, or got it online or something. I'm not, not sure where. Mm. But yeah, it was basically they're saying that you know we can't have pets in this dorm. But you know, whatever she has a turtle. But then you know the other girls like, well, the turtles are fine. They're not. You don't take them out to play with them. <laughs> so, <laughs> they don't smell. Right. They can keep them confined and different things like that. I, yeah, I just have to give a shout to her voice actor for Ito, just doing a real good job of screaming and just reacting. <laughs> but if you look at her her log of characters she plays. She plays a lot of characters like that that are a little scatterbrained, that mm -hmm. are easily, you know, flustered and scream a lot. I mean, her other one was Gundam, and Gundam uh, uh, Recon was the same, similar role, where she really wasn't quiet at any time. Every time she's on the screen, she's always very loud, but yeah, I give credit to her actor for doing pretty good she has a, She has a lot of personality, because if that's the uh, the VA that I'm thinking of, she's also playing the very, uh, the very personable you know, given to excesses of personality and a Hibike Euphonium, and that's uh, the Vice President Asuka. Uh, yep, that's her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's her. She's on there. Yep, and she was also Mugi-chan from K-On. Yay! Yeah, in gu Guilty Crown, you know, she was the... Mm -hmm. She's in a bunch of shows. I mean, I, I first heard her in, like, a, a Doki Doki Precure. She was one of the mains, and that's the first time I ever heard her. And after that, she started getting these roles left and right, so it's pretty cool seeing that, mm -hmm. you know, someone who is fairly new get all these nice roles. Uh, so what's your number three? Nikatan turns off a TV broadcast about Strange Juice when she's in the same room with Rabara. You know, um, I, I don't know if she's... <laughs> why did she do that? You know, it's like, you know, I'm not going to be suspicious that it's you. Or she might be suspicious that it's her and didn't want to didn't want to have to, that be another point of conversation to be brought up to have to deny because mm -hmm. she doesn't look like she can deny it very easily. She's a very straightforward, very open person in that way. And, you know, are you a superhero? No! <laughs> in, that, in that way, that's where no says yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it plays into the thing that said so last week that I think only Mika and Mika Tan know about this whole Strange Juice thing. While the other two are probably kept in the dark with it. Like Ito and have... Rabu probably don't know about that. It's well, not they have yet. suspicions or something. Right. And as a, you know, superhero thing, kind of cliche, it's like, I was like, can't they just match the voices up and find out who it is? That's <laughs> always when, you know, when Spider-Man talks to someone, I'm like, you know who he is? It's his damn damn voice. <laughs> he sounds like Peter Parker. And unless, of course, he's like, you know, the Flash or Averse Flash, and they use their super speed power to make their voice sound weird. Right, or, you know, the new Batman just uh, using a <laughs> robot voice translator thing, whatever. <laughs> uh, so, number two is uh, Cinnamon Boost Ghost Power. Which uh, they brought in a, I guess you, she brought in a piece of pie and cinnamon was played everywhere and the cat's like, well, yeah, cinnamon booster ghost power, and so he uses the, the cinnamon in the air to boost his power. <laughs> you know, back in the back in the '90s, and so I I, I went through my uh, what I can only affectionately call my Mick Wiccan period. Mm -hmm. That, that kind of fast food witchcraft kind of you know off the shelf <laughs> kind of thing and all that and yeah, there were there are tons of books about how er herbs and things like that. Not spices, but herbs, and how those, like, you know, you burn them and they increase your spiritual awareness or do something like that. So, you know, cinnamon boosting ghost power, sure, why not? Right, and they used if, that, they played that into Robert seeing a ghost or realizing that, hey, ghosts are actually real. So I guess maybe that give her a little bit of a, again, cheering her up, I think. So that, well, well th do. that also brought us back to an earlier scene with Mako when she was like, I don't know what you're talking about, ghosts are real, there's one right there. And she was kind of playing a joke and pointed right at you. And he was like, what? And she was like, what? And it was just a joke. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, it's your number two. Number two for Tyler. Oh, I'm sorry. Is uh, Chiromancy. Is is that okay? The little ditty, the little song, the little thing they did, that has to be something very, very Japanese-specific. 
I would think so. I'm not too sure. Because, I mean, it looks like it's making fun of something, some sort of convention that happens on TV commercials all the time mm-hmm. or something like that. So it, it really stuck out like a sore thumb. I noticed a lot of people thinking, like, this is dumb when I read about it at other places online. And I was just like, don't you, don't you just know when – I mean, you do know as a non-Japanese, this isn't made for you, right? <laughs> Right. It is made specifically with with your Western proclivities in mind, so it's just it was one of those really weird moments that just kind of stuck out. It was a cute little song, don't get me wrong, but it's just you know that's just something to bring up. Right, and it didn't just right to my number one this week was that bird head dance thing they were doing, and you know the other girl thought it was necromancy, but well, it's pretty funny. So she was doing the dance, thinking she's gonna you know summon a ghost or something, <laughs> summon spirits or <laughs> yeah. something like that. Yeah it, Rawr! Didn't, yeah, it didn't really work out, and even uh. Uh, Trainee Juice got in the, in the fun with it. He put on the chicken head and whatever, and just did the same thing. <laughs> and it, it was all for the sake of just making Robert feel a little bit happier, because they noticed she was feeling kind of down on herself. And, and yep. to the people that are like, oh, it's stupid, but but yeah, I mean, it served a point. It was to make her happy. Mm-hmm. That's really the only reason why they're doing it. So they're acting like goofballs because of that. And yeah, it, she was giving, yeah. she was willing to give it a try. She was just interrupted. Right, exactly. So I mean, I think we heard it three times, three different characters mm-hmm. <laughs> this week. So it's funny to see that thrown in there, but uh, yeah, it was okay. What was your number one? Um, at the very end of the show, the Harakiri harassment video, that just basically translates to, why don't you go kill yourself? And it had a list of people with Ito's name at the very end that will not survive till the end of the year, which, by the way, is seven days. And then it said, Happy New Year. Hmm. I mean, it's it's not then, like, a, like a chain letter thing, like... Don't send yeah, exactly. To, don't send this to someone. You die in whatever every day. So. <laughs> exactly, and 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 the video, the er, the the, uh, the main video feed, the background of it, kind of looked like the ruined earth of what happens when you is overpowered and he calls the meteor down. Right. Yeah, I can see that. You know. And so, is with time travel, is someone else time traveling and figuring all this out and maybe sending? Warnings back to the past. We got some Steins Gate stuff going on here. Mm-hmm. The only thing I can think of is again, it's probably the white-haired guy we saw in the first episode. Obviously, he has something to do with this story. Maybe it may be him who's giving this message. And I didn't notice also in Ito, you know, her why she left school. You know that she was, I guess, you know, being picked on all this stuff, and mm-hmm. she left school because of that. So it may be just you know someone trolling her. It could be someone threatening her from her school and all that. I think oh, there's yeah. a bit of a flashback of that we saw this week. But they, I guess the main character was talking to her about, you know, why don't you go to school anymore and all this. So it's probably going to hint more towards that. Or maybe the overall, you know, maybe the, the main villain of this series. Like you said, he's, he's traveling through time as well. Which makes sense. Something's up with him. Something's up with him. He's called Mastermind for a reason. Right, yep. Yeah. And some random stuff, just the, the chicken mask and stuff was pretty funny and all that. And <laughs> again, people, if they're thinking this is going to be a superhero moment of the week, I don't think so because this week had none, none of that. At all, it was more of a story about you know Ito and Rabra about why they why why they act the way they way they are now. So it's mm-hmm. like why they're not why they're probably not necessarily the part of this superhero group that both Mika and Mikatan are making up. Right. So it's, it makes you wonder, you know, episode three maybe will be or take less time from that and be more focused on the story, what's going on, and maybe mm-hmm. the main kid getting his body back. Hopefully, because I mean I don't know I only know it's only two episodes, but it's like I kind of want them to get to the point where. You know, who the, who's this other ghost? And why is he a ghost and all that stuff? Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. So anything else you want to mention on this? No, that pretty much covers it right there. Yeah, it's getting better. I mean, like I said, I was very happy they didn't do a superhero thing this week. So it just, just shows you they're going to be doing other things with this series. It's not going to be all etchy, which it does still have moments like that, but cause mm-hmm. I mean, that's what the theme is anyway. So I guess see you guys next week for episode three. Yeah.